Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Emily and I've created a channel all about, you know, rebuilding a kick-ass life um, after divorce, after adversity, and I'm here to inspire, encourage, motivate, and empower. But today, <laughs> I feel like it's an oxymoron. We're gonna talk about divorce regret. I know. Statistically, the regret of divorce is on the rise. So between 32 to 50% of couples that get divorced end up regretting it. That's a huge number. Now, divorce itself is on the rise. Gray divorce is on the rise. Gray divorce is um, couples 50 and older that are getting a divorce. And so it would make sense that if divorce is on the rise, then great, <clears throat> then um, divorce regret would also be on the rise. And so the reason for my video today, if you know me, if you follow me, if you've read my book, if you follow me on Instagram, I have always made it very clear that I have my non-negotiables, my absolute deal breakers when it comes to divorce. And those are the three A's, abuse, adultery, or addictions. Now that's not to say that if you are in a situation where you um, have a partner that maybe has an addiction to substances or an addiction problem that you have not been able to overcome it. Maybe you have had a partner that has been unfaithful and maybe you have worked through that and have been able to overcome it. So really what I'm talking about for me specifically is um, that if I have, if I am in a, in a, in a, relationship of any kind where there is abuse and abuse can come in all forms you guys it just doesn't just have to be physical it can be emotional mental um financial if there is abuse if there is ongoing adultery if there is addiction that just addictions that just can't be beat then those are my non-negotiables I have decided that going forward, those are the three things that I cannot and will not um, have in my life. And so I think that everything else can be worked out, okay? I'm gonna share a little story with you, which is a little bit, um, it's a hard pill to swallow, but I'm just gonna be vulnerable and I'm gonna share it because I think it might be helpful. So the first thing I wanna ask you is, is Think about why you want a divorce. Think about what the reasons are for your divorce because a divorce can be a long-term solution for a short-term problem, okay? A long-term solution for a short-term problem. And so I feel like in my first marriage, so I was married at 23, I had three kids by the time I was 30, and I actually married a pretty good guy and uh, that marriage lasted until my early 30s and I feel like that marriage could have been salvaged. I feel like at that time it was easy to get divorced. I feel like I was more in my masculine than I than my feminine. What I mean by that is I had this mindset of, I was working for L'Oreal, I had a great job, I was making good money, and I was like, I don't need this shit, I don't need us arguing all the time, I don't need you, blah, 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 you know, I'm, I don't need you, I don't need to pick up after you, I don't need to, so all those things that were, at the time, felt like, ugh, I don't want to deal with all this crap, it was stuff that were not part of my non-negotiables. And so my point to me telling you this is that it that marriage could have been salvaged. And why do I bring that up today? Because now that I'm approaching 60-ish soon, I'm 57, I'm gonna be 58 in a couple months, um, there are things that back then I didn't think about. Like today, being almost 60, and not being in a relationship, although I did remarry. But that's a whole other topic. That second marriage, absolutely 1000% was so toxic. It was so wrong um, that it absolutely needed to divorce, get a divorce. Um, but my first marriage, what I miss more than anything today 
is the the family unity. I'm just going to be honest. I struggle sometimes when I see my kids and they're all adults. I have a 33 year old, a 30 year old and a 28 year old. And when I see them going off for the holidays with their dad and his new wife, there's a little part of me that wishes that, you know, I could have an intact family. Does that sound crazy? The other month, just last month, my son called me and asked me to go through some old photo albums and see if I could find any pictures of him and his best friend because his best friend was getting married and they wanted to do like a collage of photos and during and, and like a film for the speech. And you guys, I was going through those photo albums. Yes, we had photo albums back then. <laughs> we didn't have like digital cameras and I have boxes of them. And I was crying like a baby. Honestly, it brought back so many, oh my God, cry. They just brought back so many good memories of when the kids were little and we had this intact family and we were a happy family and I was happy and I was in love with my husband. And it was the happiest time of my life. Having kids, being newly married was the happiest time of my life. And then I was going through the albums and thinking, God, how did it all go so wrong? How did it all just fall apart? And it fell apart because we allowed it to fall apart. Sorry. Emily, don't cry. You're ruining your makeup. So we allowed it to fall apart. And so for us, that was a long-term solution to a short-term problem. We were just in a state where, you know, we had a mortgage and we had both worked full-time and we had kids and it was busy and we had one um, child that was in the hospital a lot and it just stuff. And then we just were, ar would argue and it was just easier to throw in the towel and not deal with it than to just face it on. And, and so we ended up getting a divorce and it's been years, you guys, now it's been like 20 some years that I've been divorced from that marriage. But, um, there, yeah, there are times that I really miss the intact family. There, I said it. And so that is a very real thing. And the grass is not always greener. Okay. So that's another thing you need to think about. How many times have we heard that expression that the grass is not always greener and it's not. And you have to really sit down and assess and evaluate your decision for wanting to get a divorce. And what? And think about what are your non-negotiables? What are those deal breakers for you? Because I really believe that most everything can be worked out if you both want it. And you have to both want it, right? You have to, you have to feel like it's, it's reciprocated. That it's that what you're you know, that you're both putting in the work, that you're both wanting to stay together. And sometimes it just doesn't work out. It doesn't. But, you know, there are things that come up, that come along later in life after you get a divorce that you never even imagine would have happened. I have a friend who got divorced about five years ago. And at the time, she had a really good job. She was bringing in like six figures. She had a great job. And she um, didn't even think about the finances. In fact, she was paying her husband, ex-husband, support. And so and she was totally cool with it and fine with it because, you know, she didn't even think about it. Well, during the pandemic, she lost her job. And she has yet to find a job that paid the same kind of income that she was making before. And now she's at a, in a position where she may lose her home. She may have to sell her home uh, because financially she's starting to really struggle. And so she never thought about that. Those are things that you don't really think about. And so when the financial um, struggle comes, you know, she's now thinking, you know, reevaluating her whole decision to get a divorce. And, you know, in today's economy and in today's world, the interest rates, the inflation rates, the food prices, it is hard. And when you don't have a partner to, you know, maybe hold down the fort or you just don't have that financial backup, you know, it's, it's, it can be hard sometimes on, on people that get a divorce. You don't foresee that that could be a problem later on. And so, 
Uh, I have another friend who, um, God, I feel like all my friends are divorced. That's actually a statistic, by the way. You know how they say you are the sum of the five people you hang out with? If you are um, married and you're hanging out with a lot of single persons, the chances of you getting divorced are greater. That is a stat than if you were hanging out with a lot of other married people. If you're married and you're hanging out with a lot of single people, the chances are that you're going to be single at some point too, statistically. Um, but my other friend, I have another friend who um, got divorced. And in that situation, um, I've known them for many, many years. And I agree that, yes, it was the best thing for her. She was really, really um, struggling. Her mental health was deteriorating and it was just not a good, it was not a good situation. But... What's happening now, and I think you need to really think about this and be cognizant of this, is that since she has um, been on her own now for a while, she's beginning to settle. So she's beginning to have these thoughts of, well, I just would rather be with someone than be alone. And I don't, I, I would just rather just be with someone that can help me around the house. I would just be rather be with someone that can, you know, that we can um, split the financial burden. I would just rather be with someone that, you know, has got my back or is there for me or helps me with the kids. And so that's a very real thing too, that you end up then settling for a partner that was similar to the partner you left because you're finding that, um, you know, the situation after divorce is not as rosy or as great as you thought maybe it would be and again this is like crazy coming from me the person that is you know all about creating the best life for yourself and I have been divorced twice and I'm here to rebuild a kick-ass life after divorce but still it goes without saying that um, not divorce isn't the solution all the time in every situation for everyone the other thing with divorce that people don't foresee is when you have kids. Now, if you are getting a divorce from someone that is not agreeable, that is cantankerous, that is just not flexible, that is going to be really hard on the kids. So I was really lucky that my divorce um, from the father of my children, we actually bought a home around the corner from each other so that the kids had access to both parents at all times. Now, your time is subdivided, right? When you get a divorce, the, the kids' time is subdivided with the parents. And I didn't want ever want to make my kids feel like they, if it was time with their dad, then it was only time with their dad. And if it was my time, then it was only my time. My kids would often call me and come to my house for dinner. They literally could just walk around the corner, get on their bikes or whatever. They went to the same bus stop, whether they were with their dad or with their mom, they just went to the same bus stop to go to school. Now we made that decision consciously because we really wanted to minimize as much of the um, pain and the struggle and the trauma that can come for kids um, in a divorce situation. And uh, so we made them feel like at any time they had access to both parents. Oftentimes I'd have two kids, he'd have one, or he'd have one and I'd have two. Um, and it really worked for us. But you're, if you're not that fortunate to have a partner that is agreeable, that is flexible, that does put the kids first, it is, there is no getting around it. It is unfortunately going to affect the kids. It just does. Even in our situation, um, as much as we try to put the kids in the forefront, you know, no kid wants their parents to get divorced. No kids, no kid wants to have to choose on Christmas, you know, and don't ever make them choose, by the way, um, which parent they want to spend Christmas with. And no kid wants to leave one home Christmas Eve to go to another home. It's just, it's not the ideal. So even in the best of circumstances, they still do not go unscathed. And so that's another thing to think about is um, the kids down, down the road, down the road. You know, there's going to be a lot of times where you might feel like you're just at your wits end. You can't take it anymore. They're not being flexible. You know, maybe there's a new partner that comes into the picture and you don't, you know, you don't, I don't know, maybe you don't like the way they're, 
um, treating your kids or or maybe you like me you see them going off on a family vacay with the new love interest and you're left at home maybe for that weekend by yourself and you're like fuck that can happen too so the whole point of this of this video today is although i am here trying to help um get through a divorce or a breakup or any really any struggle is maybe just think about it before you go through with it maybe just reconsider the real reasons like at the core why are you wanting to divorce and hey if I can save one massive heartache then I would like to do that too anyway I hope that helps if you're feeling these feelings of regret totally normal hey and listen if you got out of a marriage and you are living your best life then good on you yay please leave a comment if that is the case actually you guys can you please leave a comment because people are reading the comments and it might help someone else you know what did you do how did you get through it how are you getting through it how did you overcome it maybe you did feel divorce regret but now you're in a good place how add add because this is a community i want it to be a community which means that we come together collectively we share and we help and support one 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 another so if you are divorced and you're living your best life i applaud you i applaud you good on you the whole purpose here on earth we're here for such a short amount of time and honestly i tell my kids now that are at the age where they could be having kids oh my god don't blink don't blink because it goes by like that how do i have a 33 year old how do i have a 33 year old i'm way too young for a 33 year old and it just went by like that you guys and so life is too short let's just make the most of it let's not just survive but let's thrive in whatever that entails okay Cheers. I'm such a coffee addict. Can't even see. I am drinking coffee. Sometimes people say, there's no coffee in your mug. There is. I'm drinking coffee. Black. A coffee addict. Coffee actually for me is a, is soothing. It's it's a it's a source of comfort. I don't know why. It just is. So in every video you're gonna see me drinking my coffee because it it's soothing for me. Have a great day. Think about what I just said. And um yeah yeah just wish the best for you guys in whatever capacity that is divorced not divorced let's try and live our best damn lives while we can cheers guys